Hi, everyone. It's Bert from Season Gaming, and we're back with our last podcast slash bitcast before E3. I'm joined as usual with Ains, and we have Dan from Digital Hoarders joining us as a special guest again to kind of go over our favorite things that's coming from E3. We'll be going over leaks, things that we're looking forward to that have been somewhat confirmed. And then at the end, we have a quick 18 question trivia that we kind of did the same thing as last year and we'll kind of share our results later on when we've come back from E3 and everything. So this is going to be more of a conversation. We don't really have a fixed agenda outside of what was just mentioned. So hopefully you enjoy what we're going to talk about and feel free to leave comments or if you're listening on the podcast, just thanks for listening. But we'd like to hear what you have to say as well. So I'll go ahead and kind of uh, kick it off with some of the things that we've been hearing recently about leaks and some stuff that are kind of big. I'm a big Assassin's Creed fan. I know Dan's in a big Assassin's Creed fan. Ains kind of a big Assassin's Creed fan, but kind of coming. But we did finally get some confirmation that the next Assassin's Creed is going to be called Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Uh, set in Greece, that's all we kind of know so far. So far, we've seen a little teaser of a guy getting kicked off in 300 style. It looks cool. Um, the other thing we've heard is that it is going to be a sequel to Origins. We just don't know much about how far in the future if we'll be seeing Bayek again or anything, but I'm super excited about it. And then go for it. You probably uh, know more about it yeah, than I do. I don't actually, but <laughs> all I've literally seen of this thing is that little gif of the guy getting kicked off. And then I saw a keychain, and yep. that's it. But I didn't hear anything about it being actually a direct sequel, which is awesome because I really did enjoy origins. <laughs> um, I love Assassin's Creed, except for number three. We won't talk about that, but um, I'm really excited for that one. That one's going to be probably one of my, you know, day one buys for sure. Yeah. The other thing that's funny about it is um, there's rumors that it's going to be a 2019 release. We just don't know when the rumor that I've been hearing is spring 2019 um, as a big Assassin's Creed fan that was glad that they took a year off. Um, I'm hoping it's as late as 2019 as possible. If it's another fall game, could be kind of a downside, but maybe they're going to be reusing assets or something from the previous Origins game. So, who knows? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. I thought Origins was beautiful, plays really well. So, um, you know, I'm interested in it. Or, um, Origins, I didn't finish all the way. So, they don't really just grab me the same way as some other games, but I am interested to see it. So, it could be good. Yeah, and in our last actual podcast, <laughs> when we were talking about what's going to be at certain conferences, this was not released yet or even teased in anything. People have been talking about it for a while. I think we had mentioned, was it Assassin's Creed Dynasty that we last said, Ains? Uh, yeah, we the rumor was that. Dynasty in China, yeah. yeah. So we've already seen the funny uh, social media stuff with Mario hat on or Mario with an Assassin's Creed cloak or something. So um, we'll see in there. What else are you uh, have you seen, Dan, that's been kind of leaked out that maybe you already knew about or didn't know about at all that is now been leaked whether it be the walmart ad or anything it seems like this e3 has been nothing but leaks and there's very little to be surprised about right and i'm fine with that i'm, I'm pretty sure we'll see something that's gonna kind of blow us away and you know kind of catch everybody off guard i'm really i'm crossing my fingers i'm not super confident that borderlands 3 will be here but if it is that'll win for me and that that's it because i've been waiting for so long for another borderlands Probably one of my favorite series because it's just so much fun. It's hilarious. You know, they do a really good job with the humor. And I mean, that that one from the Walmart League is the one I'm looking forward to the most. And after that, maybe, you know, the <clears throat> the Splinter Cell from that was on Walmart, wasn't it? The Splinter yeah. Cell game. Yeah, that that one also. Yep. Only yeah. because we haven't seen that forever. If, if there's if Mark League is that it? Oh, go ahead, Dan. No, no, I was done. Go ahead. Oh, sorry, I had, to, had a little breakup in the audio then. Um, the Walmart leak has been almost 100% accurate, which is almost kind of scary. Um, and that's why I was kind of saying that uh, there's not much of a surprise on some of the big games that we were hoping to see at E3. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm with Dan on Borderlands 3. Uh, that'll take all my time when that releases. I love those games. Um, Splinter Cell, yeah, I think we'll see it. We talked about that before, right? So that's... Becoming less and less of a surprise. I think uh, Just Cause 4 was a leaked one as well, a new yep. Gears game. Um, I think all these are probably pretty accurate, um, as you said, but most anticipated out of those leaks, I would probably agree with Dan. Borderlands 3 for sure. Yeah, the other funny thing that's happened about the Gears leak is there's been different uh, types of Gears of War games that have now been rumored. Obviously, nothing official from there, but uh, there's been rumors of an XCOM-style type gears 
Today in social media on Twitter, I was seeing a uh, Gears of War um, Battle Royale mode that might be teased. So all kinds of different stuff for the Gears franchises. Yeah, and that and Gears is one of my favorite franchises ever. So uh, I'll be all over it, no matter what they, no matter what they announce. I'm on it. Yeah, Tony anything has... in that in that XCOM vein would catch me. I remember playing the original back in the back of the day. The little when they had the little squares, you know, you just. That's great. <laughs> I love that game. Everybody was like, why are you playing that when you have all... I loved XCOM, that original Enemy Unknown, I think, or something like that it was called. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Gosh, that was awesome. So, yeah, yeah, I actually I didn't... It. Funny enough, Dan, I didn't play it until it was a Games with Gold game on the 360 backwards compatibility, and I was hooked that whole weekend that I, I played it. So it's... Was that, one, that one was from... That was on the 360, right? Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was talking about the PC one. I don't even know what that one was called. The, I mean, that was like a 94... Maybe. Oh, you're talking about old school. Old, old school. Yeah, I remember playing that one where everything was really, really, I mean, it was terrible. I mean, compared to what (laughs) I was doing today. I mean, but it was so much fun because, you know, and and when the the new one came out, you know, you can kind of see all the callbacks to it. Obviously, way better looking. And, you know, everything was updated. But um, the original, original XCOM is what kind of hooked me into that one. Yeah, and, you and nailed it. 1994. It was still called Enemy yeah. Unknown, but 1994. Oh, Came out on the Amiga. That's what I'm talking about. Back we're going. <laughs> Super wow. far back. Yeah, I'm just dating myself all over the place. So, <laughs> um, But you, you you take something like that and put you know gears in there, I'm down. Uh, if you can put whatever the hell you want in there, I'm still down. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Yeah, some fun stuff there. Um, some newer so, so just for folks that are listening or watching, uh, we're shooting on June fifth. Um, e three obviously starting next week um, on there, but we've seen some more of kind of leaks that have come out. So we've heard more that there may be a Hitman two uh, that's showing, and more about Division two. So I think Division two has officially been uh, teased um, from yep. uh, Ubisoft. So that's that's actually an official leak, whereas Hitman two is still showing up as a tease slash leak. Not nothing official from them. Yeah, Division 2, I'm all over. Um, talked about that before. I'm kind of surprised that they're already at a point where, um, you know, they're they're ready to show it. And they said that they're going to have it at E3. It's going to be playable. Um, I'm excited, man. I love that game. It, it mixed the uh, cool parts. Eventually, once they tuned it up, it makes the cool parts of ARPGs like Diablo. But in a realistic environment, you know, the New York City was done really well. So if they do Division 2 with all those advanced mechanics that they added but then do it in a different city or a larger scale New York or even like London. Oh man, I'd be all over it. Yep. I have always been joking that I hope we get the final game that was teased when the original announcement <laughs> came out. So if, if it's finally that I'm all over it, but if it's more of the same, I'll be kind of let down, but I don't know. I'm still not going to buy it at launch. I don't care what you say. So I'm going to wait till it's ready to go. <laughs> um, and play it. So three years if later. They, if, yeah. If they pull another destiny, uh, I'll lose my mind. Okay, so since we're going to be at, a, at E3, we're going to be being able to put our hands on some of these games. And uh, some of the stuff that I'm personally excited about that we'll be able to play, um, I know Ains is super excited about it, uh, but Super Smash Brothers. So there is going to be, uh, Nintendo will have a booth, and um, we weren't actually able to get a spot, but we are on the winning list for that as well, to play some Super Smash Brothers. Um, and that is kind of convincing me that we'll probably see a sooner than later release for Super Smash. So the interesting thing there is that guy, Marcus Sellers, and I don't want to give him too much recognition because he's been known as kind of a, a leaker from other leakers, if you will. But he commented, uh, he commented yesterday, I believe it was, that uh, Microsoft and Nintendo's business partnership, whatever you want to call it, you know, they've done cross-play already with Minecraft and some Rocket League and some other titles. Um, they've put, uh, like... Um, uh, Mario characters in Minecraft and allowed the Nintendo Minecraft players to purchase like Microsoft characters in in their copies for the Switch. So there's a partnership there where Nintendo and Microsoft seem to be collaborating a little bit. And the rumor, anyway, is that there will be Microsoft characters in the new Smash Brothers. Wow. So, of course, the first what? thought there is Banjo-Kazooie. Um, so what? if Banjo-Kazooie end up in Smash Brothers, I don't even care if I won't even play Smash Brothers. I'm still going to end up buying it. 
Um, but that would be re <laughs> that would be really, really cool if um, they've come to kind of an, a, a partnership or working relationship uh, in that vein. I would love to see Banjo Kazooie. Or could you could you even imagine like Master Chief and that's Master what I'm Brothers? talking about? Yeah. Like, yeah. Banjo Kazooie. Well, <laughs> well, it's Nintendo. I mean, you gotta, you know, it, it yeah, but they the had, they've had Snake for Metal Gear in there. Yeah, but yeah, we're that's... talking about real characters here. I mean, come oh, on, geez. real. Wait a minute. <laughs> You gotta remember, you don't like Metal Gear. I have no idea. What, yeah, about three hundred hours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, the yeah, other, but, the other one, anyway, Joanna Dark. Joanna Dark yeah, would be, be another yeah. perfect yeah. character. Yep. So, I mean, Mike, we've talked about it before. Microsoft is sitting on a bunch of characters and IPs that they don't use. Mm -hmm. um, so, if they brought some of those back to be in Smash Brothers, then that's awesome. I hope so. Yeah. Cool. I'm trying to remember because uh, a, a few game sites actually were taking the uh, the shadow because uh, Super Smash Brothers teases kind of with the shadow of who's back there. I didn't see anybody that looked like a Microsoft character with the exception of Banjo. There's a couple that could fall into, but he's kind of that animated animal type character. So it could be anybody really. But uh, that could be cool. Maybe it'll be a launch versus like DLC for the future or something. I don't know. But I, that sounds really fun. Yeah, even if they do it, you know, because Microsoft would have to profit somehow, right? So even yeah. if they do it as like DLC characters for a couple dollars each, like, oh, it would be hilarious. Like, get Marcus Phoenix in there talking about his fucking tomatoes. Fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would be funny. Uh, he throws tomatoes at you. Like, yeah. Like, With a chainsaw gun <laughs> coming at you. Now, um, now we're talking. <laughs> there we be, go. Why don't we just make a Microsoft Smash Brothers? Like, yeah. There you didn't, go. didn't Sony try that and it was just totally horrible? But, uh, I never played it. I don't know. It didn't really take off too well. Like yeah. All Stars Battle Royale or something like that. I PlayStation. But, yeah, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, some other stuff. Uh, so, Code Vein has now uh, received a launch date and it is said to have kind of a presence at E3. So, we'll be trying to do that. We'll see if I can rage quit at E3 and kind of break a controller in front of everybody. But I may I not even try to play it. I'm just going to film you. <laughs> Jeez, it'd probably be embarrassing. But I heard it's just as hard as Dark Souls, but with anime in it. So that's going to be uh, tough. Dark Souls oh, isn't man. hard. That sounds like the worst combination in the world. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dark Souls anime? No. Yeah. No. It, it looks really cool, though. Uh, yeah, the art, the art style, I don't like anime good. either, but that the art style does look pretty good. I know, yeah, it does. It for sure does. But no. Yeah. Another one is uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. So I have a feeling we're going to see a big booth there with maybe like a 10-foot Lara Croft or something that will be there, and you can kind of play her as well. Um, so that I'm really excited about that personally. As you guys know, I'm a big Tomb Raider fan of the reboot. So that's yeah. going to be cool. I'll yeah, be I'll playing be, that one for sure, man. Yeah, nothing else to say. I'll be right there with you on that one. So Yeah. yeah. So that'll be uh, some fun stuff we'll be able to, to play. That'll be on this calendar year um, and should have a decent presence at E3. Obviously, we know about the uh, big four that Sony will be talking about and playable. There's rumors that, uh, or not rumors, I think it's confirmed that Spider-Man will be playable yep. um, in some areas. So you'll be able to, I, they haven't quite mentioned where in the game that you'll be playing from him. But there's been a lot more details released as to the villain. So Kingpin and, uh, was it Negative Man? I forgot his name already. Uh, will be the main villains, but there will be a lot of cameos from like Scorpion and uh, Doc Ock and a few other people. And the first DLC will have Black Cat in it. Um, so that's already... More details coming out that we haven't even seen at E3. I'm not sure if we consider those leaks or just developer notes that have come out before that, but that's what we're kind of expecting to see on Spider-Man at E3. So I can only imagine the lines for that game, the hype around it. Um, so I don't know if we'll actually get our hands on it. I will certainly try for our fans and for Dan, because I know Dan is hugely pumped for that game. So if we can get some footage of it running live, we certainly will for you. Let's see if I can uh, pull a string or two. Probably not. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know I know Brandon's going to that, and he will yeah. be. I don't know what he's doing exactly, but uh, he a lot of times he does run those booths. He you know Pax East. He was there with Detroit cool, and nice. ran that booth. So let's see what I can do. No, cool. But, like, well, any string anything. you can pull. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you were supposed to meet up with them anyway, so yeah. Hopefully. Yeah, I talked to them the other day um, yeah. on Twitter. So well, That'd blah. Be sweet. Yeah, it'd be cool. Definitely. I haven't yeah. met him yet. So I know yeah. um, we're yeah, talking about other big games that I'm looking forward to playing. Uh, I am pumped to play Anthem. Oh. Yeah, so I, I'm excited about it, but I am super cautious of, of what we're going to be playing. I, I to, to give you the listeners a heads up, so we have actual uh, uh, reserve time that we're going to be playing Anthem together. Obviously not on the same screen, but we both have our own controls and everything that we'll get to play. 
I'm excited about it too. I just don't want another um, uh, Mass Effect uh, issue happening here, even though they've said everything that it's not going to be like that. Um, but I just hope it'll look good, and, and we don't have an official launch date for it, so all we know is that sometime in 2019. Yeah, first quarter, supposedly, um, because they said fiscal year 2019, so it should, it's got to be before April 1st. So, uh, you know, logic says it'll be March, right? Yeah, yeah, that's last possible, but I don't know. I mean, I, I hope it looks cool. I, I honestly can't wait to see more. We were very much teased as to what was shown last year, and they haven't really shown a lot more uh, content from the game, so I think any, anything that we get from it is going to be awesome. I can't wait to put my hands on it. I almost wish that one of us would have chose Battlefield Five, and then the other one's going Anthem, and we could maybe like look over each other's shoulder and see what we're playing. But <laughs> we'll both be playing Anthem, so. Yep. Um, it'd be cool if we can get in the same um, game, another, though. Co-op. Um, oh yeah. There. Um, sorry. One other thing. They did announce officially that there's going to be a uh, dev diary on Anthem. It's playable. Um, they're going to talk about some of the technology behind it. They're going to talk about how the co-op and the story works. Um, they basically said they're going to do a whole spread on the game. Like every, It'll be fully unveiled and playable. Um, you'll basically know everything about the game once E3 hits. And remember that EA Play uh, begins Saturday, right? So, I mean, we're only five days away. Yeah, the countdown has begun. Yep. Um, another one that I'm super excited to hopefully play at E3 is Skull and Bones. Um, the the uh, pirate and ship and the cannons and everything shooting off were some of my favorite mechanics from Assassin's Creed and, and Black Flag and another Assassin's Creed. So uh, seeing this kind of come out looks just amazing to me. I've, I've been hearing a lot of people saying that they were delaying uh, just to make the game better. I think they were actually trying to learn a few things from the Sea of Thieves um, release as well. So um, I hope they'll have it to play. There hasn't been any official it will be at E3 to play thing, but I did hear that we're going to be hearing a lot more about the game in general. So... That looks really cool. I, I'm really excited about that one. I haven't even heard of that game. So I know, right? <laughs> I'm like, what the hell is going on? Is that, debuted, is it like... uh, debuted at last E3 last year for yeah. Ubisoft. Oh, they did? Yeah, yeah. I totally missed that one. Yeah, yeah, check, it yeah check it out, Dan. It was um, yeah. The only thing I remember is that the trailer was like almost seven, eight minutes long. It was a long trailer because yeah. it had a full introduction. And then they kind of talked about it, and then they started showing the gameplay. So think of like Black Flag on steroids with amazing graphics and up-to-date stuff today. Yeah, that sounds awesome. Yeah, you yeah gotta, so it's yeah. supposed to be all about the ship, right? Like the, the ship mechanics and everything, like Bert said, from Black Flag put into this game, but really focused an entire game around pirates and ships. Is that... Is that Ubisoft or? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's a 2019 sense. release, just no actual date yet. Okay. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, Nains, it was delayed from 2018. It was initially going to be a 2018 yep. fall release, then they delayed it. So. Yep. Right on. So that looks cool. Um, we're also, I guess, somewhat excited for Days Gone. That game has been in development for a very long time. Um, we are hearing some rather negative uh, feedback from some early impressions on gameplay. Been, uh, people have been talking about the story better be good or at least entertaining to kind of keep people into it. But I think it has to be good for how big of a, of a hype train that's been going on for, for Days Gone. And um, I think we're going to see a lot more. I think we might even get to play some of it at E3 this year. Yeah, I don't. I'm rather indifferent to the game, to be honest. I mean, <laughs> I hope it turns out well, but I, I haven't been overly impressed with what I've seen. There's nothing in it that grabs me to say I need to play this game. Yeah, I'm kind of the same way. It's, I, I I don't. <clears throat> I read the article in Game Informer about it. Now you know it looks okay. I just I don't know. It doesn't. It's not one of those that say you know I got to go buy that day one. So yeah. Yeah. So the the last thing that's coming from the Sony conference of the Big Four or the last two, I should say. So Last of Us. Uh, we're we're all here big fans of the original one. So Last of Us Part Two. Um, I think we're going to be able to maybe see more this time versus kind of like a pre-rendered uh, in-engine uh, trailer like we did last time. I think we're going to hear more about the story, maybe why Ellie is so mad. And there's been all kinds of talk of Joel potentially being the bad guy or something. Um, so I think we'll hear a lot more about the story. We're going to hear a lot more about maybe actual gameplay this time. Um, and then the big one is Ghost of Tsushima for me. I, I think um, for that kind of atmosphere and that kind of setting, I think we're kind of due for a game like that that's similar to maybe Neo. Um, that has come out recently, but maybe this is going to have a lot more gameplay, maybe not as hard. We'll see, but I'm super excited to hear more about that game. I think it could be really cool when it finally releases. Yeah, I'm with you. The only analogy I can keep making is, you know, bring back Onimusha, but make it open world. 
Um, so I, I hope it's uh, an intriguing kind of, if it's not open world, maybe something like God of War, right? Where it's like a hub world uh, would be cool too. Um, obviously, I'll say what I always do about these games. I hope it has loot. Um, <laughs> and I hope it's got a good story. So, uh, you know, something like uh, Borderlands, but obviously a very different play mechanic and setting uh, would, be, would be really interesting to me. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, the, the trailer that they showed, I don't know, was that PSX or was that E3 last year? I don't remember. Yeah. It was one of those two. Anyway, yeah, one of those. I don't remember. Yeah, for, they, for Ghost of Shima or for yeah, uh, yeah, for Ghost. Okay, yeah, yeah, and they, uh, you know, I said it was all rendered in engine. You know, it, it, that's fine, but I actually want to see gameplay, just like Death Stranding. I want to see gameplay. I want to see these games in action. Like, what do you do? Is Death Stranding going to be, you know, Metal Gear Solid Six with throat babies? I don't know. You know, <laughs> I, I want. <laughs> I want to see. I want to see something that you know, somebody with a controller in their hand playing the game, or you know, something like that. Because at this point, you know, yeah, the trailers look awesome, but you know, I don't know what the hell that is. You know, nobody yeah. knows. I think I think they have to show some kind of gameplay for Death Stranding, or it's going to start upsetting people. Another trailer with another "What the hell just happened?" and "Why did I spend those seven minutes burning my eyes with I don't know what the hell's going on?" I think yeah. that's going to push people away from it. But at the same time, I've been wrong about Kojima games for a long time. I think they're fantastic if they're if the game plays well. But some of the Kojima games and ideas can get just extremely long-winded for me um and death strandings at that point if they don't show gameplay i'm just over it the same way i am with final fantasy 7 remake yeah i'm with you man. yep <laughs> that's all he's got to say about that that's yeah it. um okay so let's talk about some stuff that's been kind of wildly rumored that has not been leaked or anything i, I do want to touch on a few of these things because i think they could be massive for the industry and a lot of these things that we're uh, going to talk about have to do with the nintendo switch so the switch is kind of the the place where people are going to for ports for games that are six plus years old and for stuff that has maybe just released and is just going to get downgraded to be able to play on the Switch. The first big rumor that we've been hearing, and once again, not official in any sense whatsoever, is uh, Fortnite for the Switch. And I think it makes extreme sense. I actually do think it's going to be happening um, because number one, uh, Fortnite is not a demanding game. It, it can play on so many different things. There's even a mobile version that you can play on your iPhone and people are playing it nonstop. Um, and to get that population of Switch players that have never played Fortnite but have been interested, I think it's going to be a cash cow for the Switch, in my opinion. Yeah, and just uh, for awareness, literally just a couple hours ago, and I thought I saw something about this, and sure enough, I just checked. So uh, not only was Fortnite listed on the ratings board for the Switch, which almost always shows it's definitely coming, um, but a data miner, someone going into the next update, found a Fortnite label in the Nintendo Switch eShop for a future release. Oh, geez. So, I mean, we're, it's yeah. pretty much guaranteed at this point. Um, the interesting question, though, for Fortnite, right, is it's online only. Um, so, <laughs> uh... what are we doing? Um, <laughs> I mean, Nintendo Switch Online is coming in September, but it's still hugely lacking in features. Um, there's no party system. Um, the contraption to party chat through your phone is absurd. Um, you know, all the things we've talked about before with Nintendo Online. So I, I don't know exactly what you're going to be doing um, on the Switch and Fortnite. You can play the Save the World mode solo. You can do that. Um, and you can get some decent gameplay hours out of it. I've done it. But um, once you get to higher levels than that, and especially, obviously, Battle Royale is online only or co-op only. So... I don't know. I'm interested to see how they manage that. They might do something like they do with Mario Kart today, where you just go with randoms. But there's no really chat or anything, and you can't really rejoin a game or anything. You just play your race, and then it's over. Um, or even like they do with like Puyo Puyo and Tetris and stuff like that, just completely random. But uh, I don't know. That's a good question. The online, to me, is still a joke. I don't know how they can get away with that, but it's Nintendo, and they get away with everything. So Yeah. Lobo, man. <laughs> Lobo. <laughs> Lebo, Lebo, yeah. <laughs> Lebo. Lebo. Um, another game that we're super excited about, um, whether it's a rumor or factual or anything, is Persona 5 for the Nintendo Switch. Um, another game that is not very demanding from a hardware perspective. Um, it's available on PlayStation 4. It can easily run on the Nintendo Switch. So I think it's possible, but I'm not sure how real it is. It's still very much rumored. I think if it does come out on the Switch, I think all three of us are going to pick it up and pick it up and play there. 
Yep. Even though I've never played it on the PlayStation 4 and I have it sitting there, that's not true. I, I did start it and it was kind of cool. I played like 10 minutes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but then I think some, it's one of those things where something else comes out and it's like, oh, yeah, I get it. You know, I'll, I'll come back to this eventually. But yeah, it Switch, is. Um... You know, I mean, that thing collects dust. It's basically what my Switch does at this point. <laughs> yep. so, my I story. Think, uh, yeah. It, it's just. It, so maybe th- this will give me a reason to use it, you know, and make me feel better about having one. <laughs> do you, it is, um, um, Dan, do you have a do you have a Vita by chance? No, I do uh, not. I, I've wanted one, but they're really expensive, and I don't know how much I'd use it because I know. Ne- I mean, literally, the Switch never comes out of the dock. So I guess you're yeah. not a mobile player. Yep. Yeah, I, I would. I would if I had something to play on it. So, but I don't because it's all you know, like you said before, it's just mostly ports and stuff. But I would, I would buy it for it because I'm weak. And <laughs> you're, you're a digital hoarder. <laughs> yeah, and I'm a digital hoarder. That is absolutely correct. Yeah, Persona Five. Um, it's a fantastic game, and I, I didn't finish it on my PS4. It would definitely be. It's the right game for the Switch. A single player, you know, JRPG that you can get a lot of time out. Turn based combat. Um, it's excellent. So, but yeah, you got you have to spend six to eight hours before you even get through the tutorials like it just there's so deep so many mechanics to it that it teaches you stuff consistently for a while great Give me some yeah super excited yeah dan the reason i was asking about it if you had a... go ahead dan i didn't hear it I didn't no, go ahead. yeah you're no, fine I was gonna say, the reason i was asking about a vita was is because the uh, persona 4 um is actually worth buying the vita for if you can get it for a decent cost it's fantastic and uh it actually made me play my Vita a lot when I was playing it. So I have probably 40 hours in that, and I, I didn't even finish it there. But the rumors and the time to finish Persona 5 is like 90-plus hours, even if you're just trucking straight through the main mission. So it's a massive game. Yeah, I got it on sale on a, on PlayStation when it was on sale, so I don't feel super bad about it. But, you know, <laughs> it's, it is what it is, man. <laughs> I'm going to play it. I Actually, I was looking at it not even kidding i was looking at it today i was going through i was like man i want to start a new game i want to start something else and that was one of them that uh i was going to try and uh maybe that'll be it <laughs> probably not that's the one Ains, you got anything else on that one you're but you're going to say something i feel like i interrupted you oh no i'm good nope yeah another one um that i guess is becoming more official by the day but still not official is the new devil may cry um which i guess is devil may cry 5 would be the official title there um, nothing really outside of point. I think uh, to Ains's point a second ago about something being um, trademarked somewhere or like a website or something. Devil May Cry 5 was recently done that same way, so people are speculating that that might be a game we'll be seeing. Um, obviously, being a Capcom game, I'm not really sure if it's going to be exclusive to any console or if anybody's going everybody's to have marketing rights, but we might see it in a trailer reel for Microsoft or Sony, so that's going to be where it could probably show up, being that Capcom doesn't have their own a conference so that's where we might see it so uh, very possible i i'm not saying yes or no against it i think it's it could happen um the last devil may cry wasn't exactly a stellar hit and people didn't you know clamor to it or love it or hate it i think people were kind of in the middle or they didn't like it so um i enjoyed it though i've liked all the devil may cries i don't have a big opinion on this one one way or another i don't really get into those just straight action games much anymore i played devil may cry way back when it first came out and liked it but don't really care for this too much. That's kind of where I'm at too. I, I played that one. I'd much rather have something like, you know, like Bayonetta three or something like that. That that one. I mean, it's a similar game to me. It was. I haven't played a Devil May, Devil May Cry since I think the first one. So and it was all right. It just never really grabbed me. Yeah. So um, on your point on Bayonetta, let me just quick quickly talk about a leak that was kind of the they had like an internal use only sheet that was for E3 as to what's going to be shown at Nintendo. I think we're going to see something massive from Nintendo. We've all been speculating that the games that have been coming out for the Switch have been kind of stale. We've been seeing a lot of ports, and I'm expecting more ports to be coming um, down the line. There's some that um, are being talked about. There's going to be maybe a wonderful 101 port or something like that. But the stuff that um, is said to be showing at E3 from Nintendo is going to be, I'll just go through these real quick, and you guys can talk about them. So Super Smash Brothers, obviously, we already talked about it. We're going to see more on that. There's rumors that it's going to be a new Star Fox. Let me actually give you the name of this one. It's called a uh, Lilat System. So uh, we're not sure if it's going to be more of like a, a shooting slash uh, space 
flight type game. That's what it looks like from the title and the slight description that was given. Uh, Splatoon 2 is going to have an expansion pack, which is just going to be probably more maps, maybe another couple characters. Uh, Metroid Prime, which was before given a number as far as like a Metroid Prime th uh, 4, is going to be called Metroid Prime Renegade. So is that going to be factual or not? We'll see. Uh, we have another Yoshi title coming. Um, Fire Emblem Memories, um, a sequel or at least something to do with Luigi's Mansion, and a new Punch-Out. So uh, some fun stuff that are coming from Nintendo. I think this was kind of our concern that there wasn't a lot of first party coming and a lot of just ports from previous coming. This might clear up that issue. I didn't even see that leak. So, <laughs> yeah, I, uh, <laughs> let me I'm, uh, Metroid for sure. That's going to be, that's the one I'm probably looking forward to the most. Um, I would love to see a new Mario game, but I don't think that's happening. There's a lot of that Pokemon stuff that they talked about. Um, and then Bayonetta 3. As long as there's no more Labo, Labo, I'm fine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah let's, let's, let's go ahead, Ace. Oh, sorry, I was just going to say Metroid for me would be the most anticipated as well. Um, there's not a whole lot in that those IPs you just mentioned that really interest me. Star Fox doesn't do much for me. Yoshi I like as a character, but the games themselves, nothing great. Punch Out, that eh, depends what's in it um, and how it plays. But yeah, not a whole lot there. So we'll see. Yeah, it seems like a lot of the uh, recycled Nintendo content that we see every generation. I know Microsoft gets a lot of crap for having the Halo and the Gears and the Forza and everything like that. But Nintendo does it just as bad, if not worse, because the number of the same games they recycle every generation. Uh, one thing that was not um, mentioned here was a new Mario Kart. I know we've been talking about a potential Mario Kart down the road, maybe in 2019, 2020. It's not being leaked in any way whatsoever. Um, so I don't know if that's good or bad. Maybe that's, they're doing something special to it. Um, I am expecting to see more Bayonetta 3. Um, hopefully a trailer this time, if not little gameplay. So I'll be super excited about that as I'm a huge fan of both the uh, original games. <laughs> okay, so moving on from Nintendo stuff, um, we're just going to go through just a few points that we'd personally like to see at E3. Maybe these are things that um, have not been talked about too much in the press because of leaks and maybe some surprises for us. So, Dan, why don't you start us off? All right, so <clears throat> I'm really... I'm just going to kind of hit on some of the things that I want to see. Crackdown 3, I want to see something from that one way or the other. Um, my big kind of surprise is I would like to see like something drop where either it's like a demo or they do one of those. All right, guess what? You can download the game right now. Probably not going to happen. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting my hopes way, way up there. Um, Cyberpunk 2077, obviously, I think everybody's excited about that here. Um, a uh, new controller from Xbox, which I will buy three of. Um, <laughs> for some reason, another one that nobody's really been talking about, but I'm sure it's going to be there is Dreams. I only, yeah. I really saw some stuff the last time, but I think it was at PSX, and my kids really, really are excited about that game. It looks like something we can sit down and maybe work on together, so that would be pretty cool. Um, as far as any other games, I want to see some Prey DLC. Hopefully that'll be there. Uh, Fallout 76. I'm curious on what the heck it actually is. Nobody knows. Uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, as long as I don't see a car, um, <laughs> Microsoft's deal, I'll be good to go. So that's about all I got, guys. How much you ain't. Oh, wait, hold on, wait a minute. Oh. SOCOM. I want to see a SOCOM game. Uh. Something. SOCOM. I don't think I'm going to see it, but I'll, I'll be wishing. There's been really, really light rumors that that could happen, but we'll right. see. Uh, for me, number one is obvious. That would be Halo 6, Halo 6, Halo 6, um, or whatever the next Halo is, right? They're, they're, they said last time they're moving away from numerical entries. So like they did Halo 5 Guardians, I, I'm starting to expect that Halo 6 won't actually be called Halo 6. It'll just be Halo and a, and a name. Um, but regardless, the next Halo title is number one by far for me. Uh, followed closely by Cyberpunk, Dan already said. Um, there's probably a few games I'm anticipating more than Cyberpunk 2077. I hope we get some semblance of a release date for that game. Um, it's been in development for a long time now. Uh, Last of Us 2, I can't wait to see more about that. One of my other top anticipated titles, along with Red Dead 2. Um, just seeing more of that. But those are all things we kind of know. Three of those we know Halo 6 is almost definite, right? Um, 
I'm really interested to see if Nintendo does anything with Switch hardware. I'm, we've talked about it before. I'm doubting it because of how well the Switch is selling and why mess with that now. But um, it would be interesting to see if they start to talk about some like a, a new Switch or an improved Switch. I would like to see that. And um, I think other than that, probably uh, Gears 5 or whatever the next Gears titles are. Halo and Gears are my favorite franchises, so um, definitely something in that area or that universe i should say nice nice so um <clears throat> one of the things i was going to talk about and is uh dark siders 3 so um i think we've heard about it a little bit <laughs> ign had some special coverage uh they sent uh, one of their uh editors off to talk to the studios which is actually here in austin and they did kind of talk about dark siders 3 is being worked on it has been being worked on for a little bit Hopefully we'll get some actual gameplay, not the development gameplay that they were kind of testing certain things. So I'm super excited about that. Um, another one is, as Dan mentioned, the uh, Microsoft Elite Controller. So there's been a lot of talk about this before even E3 was uh, kind of the, the big thing. I uh, love my Elite Controller. However, it's fallen apart on me in like three different areas. I've had to fix it and it's working good. And unfortunately the glue is coming off the back again for the controller. Um, so I have to continue to switch it out with my um, Scorpio controller fairly often unless I'm going to play something that's like tedious on my hand uh, for a while. So hopefully there has a new one coming out with better features and doesn't fall apart. So I'm excited to hear about that. Another one was uh, Last Light, which was, believe it or not, one of my favorite trailers from all of E3 last year. I want to see more on this game, more gameplay, more of the awesome music that they use, and I want to see more about it. And last but not least was uh, my biggest surprise and most exciting surprise last year was Beyond Good and Evil 2. Um, I hope to hear more about it, maybe even a light release date or maybe something time to expect it in and uh, more about the story because we know it's a prequel, but we don't know how far into uh, the, the past it goes into and maybe we'll see some of the characters again from the original game. So those are my most excited things to see and hopefully something new that has not been leaked in any way whatsoever. So, um, all right, so let's get to our kind of fun part, and we're going to zoom through these um, with quick answers. Ains is going to take us through some quick trivia questions. Uh, last year, we kept track of these, and we came back to see who was right. I think we had a, was it a three-way tie or a two-way tie with uh, correct answers, Ains, last yeah, year? Yeah, we had a three-way tie last year uh, between you, me, and Jordan. So this year, we're bringing in Dan. We've got 18 total questions there's a couple that are like two and one so really it could be like 22 or so questions um simple yes no answers there's no maybe for two points dan nice try uh, <laughs> so yes no answers only and uh, after e three next week or uh the following week i'll go back and tally this up and we'll uh talk about it in our post e3 coverage so let's kick it off um just going sequentially here so bert you answer first and answer second so First up, will Sony debut Bloodborne 2? Yes. Yes. Ooh, I say no. Oh, I'm, wow. I'm already up one point. <laughs> um, <laughs> you should have said or 10 no. <laughs> Will Ubisoft uh, debut Splinter Cell as expected? Yes. Yes. You think, Dan, yes? All right, yeah, I'm going yes as well. Uh, that's almost, that's, I don't know. I think better be good, too. I can't wait. All right, so this is a two-parter. Um, will Halo 6 appear at E3? Yes. Okay, and will it launch in 2018, given the normal release cycle? No. All right. Same, yes, and then no. And I'm going the same as well, so that is a boring question. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, will Nintendo show Metroid Prime 4 gameplay? Uh, gameplay. Yep. Uh, yes, yes, Switch, I do think so. Switching the question up on you, sorry. Okay. okay. I'm going to say no. You're going to say no, okay. And will a release window be given? Not a specific date, but some type of date at all. Yeah. Yes to both of those. All right. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I didn't um, say gameplay. I think they're going to show a trailer. Yeah, and no, that's... no I'm, a, I'm laughing. I'm actually with okay. you. I'm going to say no gameplay, but yes, we will get a window. I'm going to get right. two yeses. Yeah. All right. It's well, Sony. Here's an obscure Sony. one, but there's been talk about it lately. Will Sony bring back Siphon Filter? No. Damn. Absolutely. Don't even give it a shot. I know. Yes. Does that have oh. to be this year? Oh. Does it what? Does it have to be this year? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. they just have to bench okay, it. Here's the it. That's okay, all I'm going to say yes. Now, if it ever comes back and I, you know, we tie or something? <laughs> no, this is for 2018. Come on. 2022. 
<laughs> so, you're going to be like, hey, you guys remember? I it. <laughs> um, so I'm saying no to that one. Right. Um, so will Microsoft bring back one of their um, rare IPs in the form of either a new Banjo-Kazooie or a new Perfect Dark? I hate to break your heart, Ains, but I think it's a no. It's all right. You're not answering any more questions, Dan? Yes. Yes. That's the yes. correct answer. Very yes, they will. Or they will hear a boo from the crowd. Mm-hmm. Um, on just that one further, guy. <laughs> just one guy booing. It's that like, guy from Kansas again. Hey, hey, invited this guy. Aids will be there, so at the end you'll hear boo. Yeah. Um, <laughs> On that same note we talked about earlier, given the rumors we've heard, were, will Banjo-Kazooie appear in Smash Brothers? Yes. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say right. yes just to try and will it into fruition. Yeah. I did that multiple times last year. I think they'll bring them into the Smash to test the waters, and then they will release it next year uh, at next E3. Ah, that's a good point. That's a good point. I, I did this last year where I said answers to try and will things to come true, <laughs> and uh, I failed on all of them, so I don't know why I'm doing it again. Right. Uh, will Elder Scrolls Six be teased at all? Yes. Ooh, I'm going to say no. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm saying no as well. All right, so you can stick with just Fallout this year. Yeah, well, we'll get to that. <laughs> well, <laughs> well Final Fantasy 7 remake show up at all? Unfortunately, Eddie. yes. Unfortunately. Okay. No. Interesting. I'll say yes. And if so, will it be on Sony stage or Square Enix's stage? Both. So Whoa. is that Whoa. Yeah, double that's yeses? A, that's a lot of a broken game showing up. Yeah, I'm telling you. All right. Dan, so if you're it saying. Does show up. If it does show up, though, okay, all right, I will say it will be on Square's stage. Squares, okay, I'm saying yes, it will show up, and I'm saying on Square's by itself. Yeah, Sony might be washing their hands of that. Rumors that it's no longer exclusive either, so we'll see. I thought they already confirmed that it's coming to Xbox. It just, oh, did they? yeah, I, I thought. I who knows at this point? Is it coming out at all? We don't know. Will the Crystal Dynamics Avengers game be shown? Yes. Yes. All right, I'm a yes as well. And the rumor that came out about it is that it's going to be a game like Ultimate Alliance. Is that true? Yes. No. I have no, no idea. No. <laughs> I'll say yes as well. All right, here's, uh, here's a big one. Will Kingdom Hearts 3 actually release in 2018? Yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, my gut says no, but I'm gonna say yes. I don't know why. All right, <clears throat> will Crackdown three delay to 2019? Yes, I feel like I've been saying yes too much. Too many yeses. No, <laughs> I've been saying no too much. I'm gonna say no as well. I have faith. <laughs> I have faith. All right, well, here's a random one. This is a uh, not a yes or no. What major title Shit. that's currently not rumored to have one? Will debut a battle royale mode, or will you can say none will? Oh, that is not rumored to have one. Um, hey, uh, Gears of War. Actually, no, that's been rumored, hasn't it? Well, you can say yeah. Gears because uh, uh, let's say not definitive. I- I'd say Gears or Halo. Um, I think Halo might have. I wish they would do an ODST battle royale, but you I got to pick one. You got to pick Halo. One. <laughs> oh, crap. Uh, I'll say Red Dead. Oh, oh, oh. interesting. Mm. Oh PS- boy, <laughs> only on the PS4 though. I'm begrudgingly <laughs> going to say Halo as well. And I got Red Dead's got me in my head now. I think that might actually be it. Mm. Well, the other that's intriguing, and I don't want to get us too off topic here, but Crackdown. If you think about Battle Royale, yeah. even if it's not a hundred players, if you do Battle Royale with a destructible city, that would be nuts. So. Yes. I hope they do it. But anyway, will Nintendo debut a new Yoshi title? Uh, uh, outside of the one that's already announced? Yes. Uh, no. Okay. No. No, I'll say no as well. What about an actual Punch-Out? Yes. Is the rumor of Punch-Out true? Mm-hmm. Yep. No. No. I'm going to say no as well. Will Nintendo announce an N64 classic? Yes. 
Eh, yeah. I guess. <laughs> I guess, yeah. I guess. I'm going to say no. Well, Microsoft announced the new Fable. Mm. The rumored yes. new Fable, we should say. Yeah. yeah, by Playground. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to say yes as well. And will it be part of an announcement uh, with Playground Games' acquisition? Oh, yes. Yeah, the timing has to be there. Otherwise, it's one hell of yeah. a coincidence. I would say you're right. Yep. I'm going to say no to that. I don't know why I'm saying no, just no. to be different, I think. Well, Todd Howard's, and this is going back to the whole Fallout and Elder Scrolls thing. Well, Todd Howard's team, the you know the major team responsible for the core Fallout and uh, uh, Elder Scrolls games, will their new game show up at the Bethesda conference, rumored to be Starfield? Yes. Yes. I say yes as well. And then lastly, let's close out with uh, something that's been a big topic of the, across the industry this year. Will Microsoft announce a new AAA original IP? Original. Um, yes, Meaning please. Not, a, not Fable, not Perfect okay. Dark, not, you know, just brand new original AAA budget and developer. Yes. And they got two damn hours, so they better do something. Yeah, I'll say yes. I will say yes as well. Yay. That is it. That's our trivia. So yeah. I can look at these and say I think I've already won, but hmm. no, yep. no. I'm, I'm not kidding. Sure about that. I definitely lost. <clears throat> okay, so we will um, actually share our results on this on our next uh, original BitCast, not the because we're going to be casting um, while we're in LA at E3. And with that segue, we did want to share with you what, what our plan is at E3 and where you can kind of watch us, find us, and, and what to kind of look forward to from us in the next coming week. So we are going to E3. We do arrive on Saturday, and we do plan on jumping into the E3 experience as soon as possible. Um, Ains, you want to kind of go through some of the stuff that you're going to that I'm not going to, unfortunately? Yeah, it is unfortunate. Um, so Saturday we arrive. Um, uh, EA Play is happening that evening, and so we'll probably do our first broadcast that night to talk about the things EA showed. Sunday brings a whole wealth of things, including uh, Microsoft and Bethesda. I will be at the Microsoft conference, um, which is the same. Sadly, we could only get one of us in, which sucks. But um, we play what we go to EA play Sunday morning. Microsoft conference is Sunday afternoon and then Bethesda is Sunday evening. And then late Sunday evening, I don't know if we'll be reporting on it, is Devolver Digital. But so we'll be yeah. covering a ton on Sunday night. Monday brings, uh, gosh, off the top of my head, I forget now. I think it's Square. Sony is in the evening. Um, maybe Ubisoft as well. So really, the big evenings for us in terms of uh, content covering the days will be Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday evening. And then uh, E3 itself, the actual show floor content we'll be producing is Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So we'll be um, trying to shoot some back at our uh, hotel slash condo um, and kind of doing it together and telling you what our impressions are. If you're listening and if there's something that maybe we haven't talked about today and you'd like us to get maybe some footage or some uh, pictures of the booth of that specific game, let us know in the comments. Uh, we're happy to do that for you. We're going to try to meet as many uh, developers and uh, some friends that we haven't met in person while we're there and also try to get some uh, relationships with other vendors and stuff that are there. So. Let us know if there's anything you're looking for. Uh, if you're listening uh, electronically, thanks for listening to our podcast. If you're watching on YouTube, thanks for watching there. Make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't. That way you kind of keep up to date with what we're doing. As always, just uh, appreciate everyone listening. We I did comment uh, earlier in the week on social media that our listen count has uh, gone up a good percentage lately. Um, including our E3 coverage and other things we've been talking about. So uh, I want to thank Dan for coming on as always, and just want to thank everyone for listening and uh, tuning in. Uh, as we always say, we really, really appreciate it, and uh, we hope to bring you some, um, you know, some extensive E3 coverage from a smaller outlet like ours, and also some unique coverage. So to Bert's point, if there's something you want to see, because a lot of the major outlets tend to focus on similar things, if there's something more unique or standalone or a smaller booth you'd like to see something and you can't get out to LA for E3, let us know. We'll be happy to uh, check it out for you. Boom. I'm leaving that in. <laughs>